that's with the Tucker Tool dies today. So, uh, just to start off, I have a Tucker Tool Concho die, and it's about an inch big by uh, maybe three quarters of an inch wide. And you can always tell Jerry's tools because it'll say Tucker Tool right on the top, and he'll have three little dots. And those little dots help you line up male to female. So, you'll have three dots on the male and three dots on the female, and you just line those up, and you're good to go. Now, I've shown you how to use these sorts of dies before on my Tucker Tools SB2 shot plate and the Bicurvit uh, video that I have. So you can look under my, my name, LeslieKaleVillarreal.com, and go to free videos, and you'll see that, that video there. So you basically just take an annealed piece of metal, put it in between, and you hammer with a nice big hammer, and you rock your stamp all around, and you're going to get a gorgeous die that looks like this. So, let me zoom in here. So this is an example of Jerry's tool. Get that one out of the way. Uh, and this is his concho die, his big concho die, and this is, is what you get. It's nice and thick. Uh, the, the metal on here is this, I believe this is a 22 gauge that I used. And it would be great on a, on a cuff. Uh, it would look just awesome on a little copper cuff. If you like copper, or if you like sterling silver, you could do something like that and just, you know, decorate it with stamps or whatever you wanted to do. Uh, this would also, I think, make an excellent ring. I've been thinking about making a ring out of it, but I haven't yet. Anyway, that's the old-fashioned way and then the tried-and-true method for any of you that want to make uh, use dies and make nice stamps uh, and you don't have a press you can just do it this way you just put the metal in there and you hammer it and you rock it and you you get a gorgeous piece so the other way that I'm going to show you today is how to use the hydraulic press okay so if you wonder why I'm wearing gloves it's because I'm going to be dealing with lead um, okay, just a few notes of safety. When you're working with lead, wear rubber gloves. It's, you know, it's not good to ingest it. If you eat it, if you get it inside your body, then it's a problem. But as long as you, what I do is I wear gloves when I touch it or use it, and then I wipe down my tools with alcohol after I'm done so that I'm not cross-contaminating anything with lead. So, but you're not going to get hurt in your studio if you're just using lead and you're using it properly and you're not, um you know, touching your mouth. Don't stick ever stick anything in your mouth after you've touched lead. So you should be washing your hands every time you leave the studio anyway. Uh, hopefully you're doing that because there are lots of chemicals, flux and pickle and all sorts of things that are no good. So take off your rubber gloves, toss them into the trash when you're done working with lead and just be smart and be safe and you'll be fine. Uh, make sure again that you wash your hands even after you take your gloves off. Okay, that's it. Safety done. If you have dyes that don't have a female counterpart and a male counterpart, so usually you just get a female, like some of the ones that you buy from uh, India on eBay, or you know you might find some old dyes like this, and you don't have the male part. So what you can do, just let me give you a little bit of background. These are meant to be used with extremely thin metal, like 30 gauge metal. And the way that they, they use them in other countries is, and even this country, is you lay an annealed sheet of fine, fine metal, really thin, and then you put a piece of lead over it, and then you would hammer until you got the, it to push down and make the impression that you're, that you're looking for. So, but you have to use really thin metal uh, or you won't get a really good result. Now, if you use these in the press, you will get a nice result. So what I'm going to do is show you that technique. Um, you have to also be careful because if you get these dyes and you don't know what they're made out of, they could crack or if they're not properly tempered. Uh, Jerry's tools are properly tempered and you won't have to worry about them breaking in the hydraulic press. Um, so, you know, I can't tell you that if you go out and you buy somebody's, 
handmade dye and you put it in the press that it isn't going to crack it because I don't know that. I don't know how that dye was made. So uh, use caution, you know, if you're, if, and know that you might crack one if you're, if you, uh, if it's not made right or if it's really old. I think the brass ones are probably okay, but I, I, I can't speak to where you're getting your dyes from. I know Jerry's dyes are okay. And I know Kevin's, anything that Kevin Potter makes is going to be okay too. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to take a piece of lead. Now, if you're wondering where you can get lead, I just bought some on eBay. You know, I understand that you can probably get it at auto part stores or tire stores. Um, fishing lures are made out of lead. I'm, I'm not exactly sure where to get it, but I got mine on eBay. And I just bought a big chunk, and I broke off a chunk. It, it's really soft, so I, I just broke off a chunk, and I can bend this with my fingers. And I bent it in half, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my annealed metal, and I'm going to put it with my dye in my press. So let's go do that. Before I do anything else, I'm going to take a little bit of oil. I like to use three-in-one oil, but you can use whatever you've got. And I brush it inside the dye with a little brush. Not real goofy, but just so it's... It'll make a bit of a resist and protect things from sticking too bad. And then I'm going to take my dye. I'm going to take my annealed metal. In this case, I'm using 22 gauge. That's the other nice thing about using a press with Jerry's tools is you can get really nice thick uh, results. So 22 gauge and I'm going to put my lead on top of that and I'm going to put it in the press just like this, okay? Back out and talk to you a little bit about my press. It's um, all electric and so there's no pumping. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, it's really big. It's a large one. It takes up some room on your, on your bench. I have my little moose here to watch over us and she's got pearls on. <laughs> Moose head. Anyway, so uh, uh, this has just got a really easy up and down lever. Yeah, I don't have to pump. It's pr pretty cool, and I've never used it like this before, so I'm going to give this a try. I want to make sure things are really centered in the press, so I've got it right in the center, so all the weight will be distributed evenly. I have blocks here so that they will uh, ease the space that I have to lift up on my springs. If I don't, didn't put blocks on here, it would stretch out my springs uh, and they wouldn't last as long. So I just have extra blocks. So if you do order a powder press, ask Kevin to hook you up with some extra blocks. Uh, they will keep your springs uh, healthy and give them a longer life. And I'm going to turn it on. Here we go. Easy. Okay, so here's what we have. Piece of lead smashed on there. I just need to get a little knife or something and slip underneath there. Oh, actually, I didn't even have to do that. It just came right off of my fingers. And there's my gorgeous concho. It couldn't be prettier. And my dye is, uh, is good, too. Now I just have to peel the lead off the back. It can be a little bit of a bear to get that lead out. It sticks in there. There we go. So there's the lead. You can see it really made a nice, this is the lead here. and This is the, the concho. So the lead really made a beautiful uh, male counterpart for the female. And here we go. And that is one, it's not going to have any scratches or mars or, you know, misalignments because you used it in the press. So I really highly recommend using these tools in the press. They're great. If you don't have a hydraulic press, you may want to get one. You don't need an electric one. I'm lucky to have such a, a beautiful press. Um, if you can afford one, you'll never want to ever go back to pump, 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 pump it up, pump it up. You'll never want to go back to do that again. Uh, it's really cool to have a hydraulic press, um, whether it's electric though or not. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you can afford, it's, it's a great tool. So, uh, you know, the other nice thing about Jerry and Kevin is they make quality tools, as I mentioned earlier. You know, Jerry says he's, he doesn't ever have returns, and I believe that because anything he stands by, you know, if you have a problem with it, he's going to take care of you. Now, 
same with Kevin. Kevin's tools have like a lifetime warranty on them. So uh, anytime you buy a hydraulic press or a, a really big power tool, this is a 20 ton press, and anytime you buy a tool like this, you want to make sure you know where you're getting it from because if it wasn't welded together well, you know, it could be a dangerous piece of equipment. But the way Kevin makes them, they're easy peasy and they're very well made. And you'll never have a problem with them. Okay? So, uh, next I'm going to show you a little die from India. Die, and uh, I'm going to show you how to, how to use that in the press as well too if you happen to have any of these little Indian dies. Okay, so I've annealed my metal. I'm gonna set my die, my metal, and my piece of lead. Just like, make a little sandwich, just like this. Okay. And I'm gonna put it right in the center. It's important to center things when you're working on the press. Get things right in the middle. This is a really deep die, so I'm hoping that uh, it's going to work out okay. It should. Okay, here we go. Turn on my press. It's pretty quiet, actually. I like this press a lot. I'm going slowly. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, all right, so now I'm just going to take some pliers and pull this lead off. Of the piece. Okay, you can see I got an impression there. So it actually really did act like the female counterpart. You can see inside the silver, I got a nice impression too. So what I want to do is just carefully lift this up. Okay, so I pulled it out. If you use oil inside the die, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. If you don't use oil, depending on what the die is made of, you're gonna have a hard time getting it out. The first, here is what you have left. Okay. Here's one that's polished and cleaned up and trimmed out. I'll put that here and let you guys take a look. So this one I made with the uh, hammer. This one I made in the press. And these two I made in the press. Both of them. Okay, and other thing that you can do with your dies that I'm not sure if you know about is uh, using PMC. So I have used uh, precious metal clay in my dies before I had my press, and um, it's called PMC3. You get 25 grams, which will give you about uh, maybe seven of these. <laughs> it's not very much. Uh, it, you really don't get much. It's super expensive, and a pack like this will run you for 25 grams will run you about $50. So that's why it's so much better not to use PMC, but it, it's doable. So if you don't have a press and you don't want a hammer or you don't have really expensive tools, what you can do is you can take your PMC and you just put it in your prep, in your, just like it's clay, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's uh, silver with a binder, like a seaweed binder, I believe it's what's in there. And then you, you roll it out just like clay, you push it in, just like you would sculpt the clay or anything, you peel it out. There's a hundred videos out there on how to torch fire PMC3 clay. Uh, and what you end up with is fine silver pieces. So I make lots of things, little flowers. And this is the one that I made. Uh, and I, again, I just torch fired them. You can even use a butane torch if you want to. You just have to be careful not to melt them and they shrink crazy shrink. So this is the size you, that you would get if you used the, the press and this is the size you'd get if you used the PMC3. Also, this one is just much nicer. It's about 30% smaller, 30% shrinkage. And these are just some little flowers that I made. Okay, kids. 
So go out there and place some orders and get your dies and uh, have fun with your new press. If you don't have a new press, get a new press. And uh, get some dies from Jerry and Kevin and um, make some good stuff, okay? So peace out. Subscribe to my website if you haven't already. www.lesliecalebillyreal.com I have online classes going on all the time. You that's all those two. Alright, peace out. That's the Camp Villarreal.